I want to keep my word. This morning, I was at the gym, and a brother that I had not seen in a while, uh, I didn't really recognize him because he was all bundled up. You know, it's, it's literally like two degrees here in Chicago. And first, I was late, so I never get there at, this, at, this, at that time. Um, I usually try to get there around 5 a.m. I wake up usually around 4.30. But let me tell you, this is one of those mornings where I woke up. I woke up at 4.30 a.m. And I literally got dressed, put my coat on, opened the door. That chill hit me. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to see if it's going to warm up a little bit. And I laid in bed. I crawled back in bed with my wife, fully clothed. She didn't budge. You know, my wife was worn out. She just got back in town from a, um, uh, for filming uh, some commercials. And so I picked her up yesterday. So she was passed out from all her travel. And so uh, I crawled back in, and I really didn't even go back to sleep. You know, I just kind of laid there. I just want to go into that cold. I'm used to the cold. It's just like as I'm getting older, this cold it, it sucks. It, it it sucks. And so anyway, I, I, I but I think that it was a um, I think the Lord wanted me to be there uh, this, today at that time because when I'm there, I, I just I literally just started working out, and the brother walks in. And he comes up to me. I didn't recognize him at first because he had his mask on, he had his scarf on, he was bundled from head to toe, and he's like, "What's up, man?" And when he lifted down his mask, I'm like, "Oh yeah, what's happening?" And we started talking. I'm like, how have you been? And he just, you know, people know you in arenas and categories. He knows me from the gym set, from the gym arena. And, um, you know, he knows that, you know, I used to play professional basketball overseas. And he was, he plays pickup ball with us. I'm not playing anymore because all these injuries and artificial hip and all of that. But uh, we still speak. And I see him sporadically. And you no, know, he was like, yeah, man, you know, I haven't been in here, you know, I haven't put on a lot of weight, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, man, it happens. And then he says, you know, you know, I haven't been in here because my wife told me his wife had gotten diagnosed with breast cancer. And so that was a pause moment. You know, typically when we're, we're in the gym, everybody is trying to get their workout in because they're on a the schedule. Most people don't want to be there anyway, so they want to get their workout knocked out they want to get it knocked out and at the same time they you know but this is one of those pause moments right where it's time to be human and so uh i just went there with him you know and he told me about the you know when she was diagnosed and you know how her therapy's going and you know just how hard it's been you know apparently she's responding well um, which I praise God for. And I promised him, you know, I said, I'm going to pray for you today. I said, I don't know if that's, you know, if you kind of subscribe to that, but we know that, you know, the prayers of the righteous availeth much. And um, not the prayers of the self righteous, but those in Christ Jesus. And so I pray for the brother. Uh, again, this is me exposed. A lot of people don't know me in this capacity, they know there's something about me. Uh, most some people kind of notice that I don't use profanity and how I carry myself, but they don't really know the why of why I move a certain way. This is the why. You know, if you've ever been curious about Dr. Solo Perry, whether from comics, from from sports, from uh, from law enforcement, uh, and whenever I get the opportunity, you know, I don't, I don't, I wear my faith on my sleeve in how I live. You know, the Word of God tells us we are living epistles to be read of all men, and. Your life is a testament to who you are, just how you move through your day-to-day, -day, how you interact in conversations, um, how you treat people, you know, how you move in business. How you do every anything is how you do everything, and that is a truism if ever I heard one. And so if you've ever if you followed me from in, in any arena, if you you know, if you rub shoulders with me in any arena, um, and you wanted want to know something, you know, what is it about this dude? Because I get that a lot. This is it. This is it. This I put it all on display here at Honor Studios uh, because I'm not one to know I've ever been a really fan, a big fan of people that go out and just um, are boastful with their faith. And then when you actually start, because when you do that, when 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 you do that, um, it was more it was more of an advent of, of the old church. You know, when you do that, uh, you can actually turn off more people than you draw to Christ. And so the Lord, 
the word of God tells us to let our light shine before men and not to be ashamed of the gospel of Christ. That doesn't mean I have to go and lead with that in every conversation. What that means is that when people ask me, I tell them, you know, when the opportunity presents itself, I share it. I'm not, um, I don't think you have to look for the opportunity. I believe that when you walk with intention, when you walk, when you're living it day to day, it's like anything else that's obvious. When that door opens, you kind of know it. You ain't got to look for it. You got to be waiting for it, not half listening to the person in the conversation, waiting for your in, you know. Um, I believe that when you're walking it the right way, it becomes your, your reticular activating system. Uh, that's our, our brain's awareness of, 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 uh, of our surroundings. It's a fancy term. It just kicks in, and you know when the time is there. And so... Um, I, you know, when I asked him, like, I hope you don't mind. He was like, no, man, you know, I, I believe in the Lord too. And he's like, thank you. And he just kept saying, thank you. And, um, I told him, well, you know, I don't have a huge audience. I said, but, um, for any of you all that are there, if you know that this cancer thing is a modern day plague, uh, it has touched my life <laughs> more times than I count everyone to date that I've lost I've lost every significant person in my life to cancer every significant loss has been to cancer um, my wife's first it was my wife's little brother he was 22 and he's what I call he was the first fan of honor studios I actually put it in our book um, in our zero issue I put it in the zero issue I put a tribute to him um, Rocky, uh, he died of testicular cancer at 22 and he found the Lord while incarcerated and he left here full of joy, full of peace. When my wife went down to see him, it was the last time she went to go see him, he was, um, he was incarcerated, um, because he got set up by some guys that just abused him. He was, he was special needs. Um, but he was a gentle soul. He was not a criminal. He was one person that was in there that should not have been in there. And mind you, I was a full-fledged veteran cop at this time, and I knew Rocky. Rocky was not a hardened criminal, but he had been hanging around these guys that had taken advantage of him for so often that the judge was just tired of seeing him and uh, gave him seven years. And my wife's prayer was, Lord, you know, do what you got to do, but I know that he can't survive seven years because he's not built like that. He was a gentle soul. You know, he's about six, seven, uh, just a beautiful spirit. I loved Rocky with all my heart. He was the first one. And then I lost my grandmother years later to cancer. And then I lost my uncle, who's my namesake, uh, who bought me, the story goes, I have the shoes here, bought me my first pair of shoes as my mom at the ripe young age of 15 brought me home from the hospital. And he was waiting on the porch and he had us I have the shoes my wife framed them uh, baby shoes that had the name of all of my aunts and uncles written on the bottom my my aunt and uncle siblings and so uh and then finally last year I lost my mom to breast cancer and so when I tell you cancer sucks uh, I have very, a very visceral reaction when I hear it. And I, I think he felt that when he, as soon as he said it to me, I, I literally dropped my head. You know, your, your biological responses, they're, they're hardwired who you are. And my poker face dropped. And I'm used to having a poker face after being in law enforcement for so long. I'm very used to um, not showing what's going on in my head because it'll get me killed. And, uh, but when I have the opportunity to kind of let all of that down, you know, put that guard down, put that wall down and just be real and be in the moment. You know, as soon as he said it to me, I, I felt my heart just sink. 